Today we're going to be looking at lesson three of our heat unit. And in this lesson we're going to be talking about conductors and insulators. Now in lesson two when we talked about methods of heat transfer we said that conduction happens because of contact between two objects or two substances. And we said that these rapidly moving molecules in the warmer substance as they kind of rubbed against, bumped against the cooler, slower moving molecules, they transfer that thermal energy into those causing them to, we use the term excite, but essentially move more rapidly as well. Today's lesson is going to look at different types of substances that either make that conduction, that transfer of heat happen more easily, or that make it happen more slowly or help prevent it. As we talk about conductors and insulators in this lesson, essentially what we're talking about are substances that affect the ability of heat to transfer, either by helping it transfer more easily or by preventing its transfer or slowing it down. Conductor is a term that we hear a lot when we talk about energy, and you may remember it from last year. We talked about conductors of electricity. We talked a little bit about conductors of heat last year as well. But when we talk about conductors, we're just talking about a material that easily transfers energy. In the case of this lesson, we're talking about conductors of heat, but you could have conductors of other types of energy as well. And when we talk about heat conduction, heat can pass easily or conduct easily through one of these conductive materials. Now there's lots of different materials that make good conductors of heat, and we'll be looking at some in some labs and some activities that we do. But a few examples right here that are very common, aluminum, copper, silver, all of them have one thing in common in that they're metals. And many types of metals make the best conductors of heat. As we think of things that we might use to conduct heat, I think a frying pan is a great example of something that we want to conduct heat. We put the pan on the stove, we put the food in the pan, and we want the heat to be able to transfer from the stove surface, the stove top, into the food. So we want to make sure that that frying pan or that pot or whatever we're cooking in is made out of a conductive material. That's why you'll see your cookware, it might be made out of like cast iron, copper, aluminum. Those are all very common materials used to make cookware because they transfer heat easily. Now there's also a lot of cases in our everyday lives where instead of wanting to allow the flow of heat, we're wanting to prevent the flow of heat. So we need another type of material for this. We need a material called an insulator. And insulators are just different materials that prevent or slow down the flow of energy. In this case, the flow of thermal energy or heat. These insulating materials are used both in cases where we want to keep heat in, allow it to stay contained in one area, or prevent heat from getting in and keep heat out. Some examples of some really common insulating materials that you probably run into a lot, things like wood, styrofoam, lots of types of rubbers and plastics all work as good insulators. One great example of insulators that we don't even really think about but that is around us every day is found in our home. And if you were to look behind the sheetrock in the walls, if you were to look, you know, under the ceiling or above the ceiling rather, you would see this insulating material. Sometimes they use rolled fiberglass or they might have like some sprayed in or blown in or different types of insulation, but they always insulate homes. And right now, you know, the weather is starting to get a little cool at night and we want to keep our heat in our home. So that insulating material during cool weather will keep heat in our home. It keeps the heat from escaping out into the atmosphere and it helps save on our heating bill. We're not having to heat our home as much because the insulation's keeping the heat inside our home. On the other hand, in the summer when the weather's really hot outside, we don't run the heat indoors, we run the air conditioning. And that's actually working to cool our home, to make it not as hot. So the insulation in the summer, whereas in the winter it kept the heat in, in the summer it's actually keeping the warmer air, keeping the heat out of our home. So again, we don't have to run our air conditioning as much and as hard, and it's able to keep our home cool using less energy and less money. A cooler that we might use to put our drinks and our food in is another great example of an insulator. In this case, it's keeping heat out. We put our ice, we put our cold drinks, we put our sandwiches, our food, whatever we're packing in the cooler. And because that styrofoam, that plastic that the cooler's made out of are insulating materials, it helps keep our ice frozen much longer. It helps keep our food cooler much longer. If we were to look around our homes and just look around at the things we interact with every day, we would see lots of both insulators and conductors that we use often without even really realizing it and thinking about it. 
but they do play a very important role in many of the technologies that we have that make our lives easier today. Now this chart also shows a few types of both conductors and insulators, and it shows from the best insulators to the best conductors. And water is kind of right in the middle. Water can conduct heat a little bit, but it's not a great conductor of heat. Things like stone make a better conductor. Metal makes an even better conductor. And then on the other hand, wood makes a pretty good insulator. Plastics, polypropylene, styrofoam, things like that make even better insulators. So depending on what we're using the conductor or what we're using the insulator for, we might want to conduct a little bit of heat. We might want to conduct a lot of heat. We might want to insulate a little bit or we might want to insulate a lot. And that's going to depend on the type of material that works best for that application. Do we want a good conductor? Do we want a good insulator? Or do we want something in between? We'll be doing a few activities to look at examples of good conductors and insulators and also test the effect that these conductors and insulators do actually have on the transfer of heat. So stay tuned for that in the next few days and weeks.